Well, hello again from Kingston for the last time on a regular update. Perhaps behind me you can see the workers completing one of the last tasks on the west side. And uh, in wildlife this week, I'm going to be showing you the highlights for the year. So stick around till the end. Please consider subscribing. And don't forget, it may be the last of the regular updates, but there'll be many more updates to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the end. Monday saw the return to site of familiar faces from GIP. They worked their asphalt magic on a small section of the multi-use pathway on the west end. What would prove to be a big week for departing equipments kicked off with preparation and movement of the Tadano wheeled crane. It would take little time to load, a necessarily cautious process. Then, after securing it and backing up the tractor, it would head off to its next workplace. Nearby, work on remediating the west shoreline was now well advanced. The Genic machine was seen to travel from the east side to work on and around the west abutment. And if you were paying close attention, you might have seen Black and MacDonald putting brackets for hanging baskets on the lamp posts. Across the river, after careful preparation, another major equipment departed the site. Below the Gore Road Library, Sharp Landscaping continued addressing the considerable task of landscaping the area. Tuesday opened to reveal an ever emptier West End and more equipment lined up for departure. But we'll start over the river on Gore Road, where a team from Utilities Kingston activated and trialled the traffic signals on the Point St. Mark Gore Road intersection. In the library car park, with their work on the east side complete, Barr loaded their excavator and prepared it for movement to the west end. On the west end, it would play a substantial role in completing a drainage ditch on the north side of the approach road. Clearing what is colloquially termed the West Village was becoming an even sharper focus. But work on the shoreline, including checks on grades and depths, was going well. Wednesday started pretty foggy, and curiously enough, the fog got more dense as the morning went on. But it had little or no effect on work undertaken by Barr to excavate and cap a water main used during the construction of the bridge. There was little or no effect either on Barr's work to complete the drainage ditch. It was a busy day on the water, with crews on the west end wrangling with Old Curtain, and on the east end, a boat engaged in what appeared to be surveying depths and details of the bottom off the east shore. On what turned into a rather wet afternoon, there was a lot of work on Gore Road 
to clear up and tidy up. By nightfall, things were considerably clearer. Thursday was an altogether better day and saw RW Electric installing celebratory banners on the bridge ahead of its opening. A task clearly undertaken with the utmost efficiency. Bar Construction continued their work on sorting out the water main on the west side and they were making time too to connect existing drainage to the separator on the west side. With snow in the forecast and in Canada an inevitability, it wasn't entirely surprising to see a city snowplow arrive to conduct an exploratory visit to the bridge. It's in everybody's best interests that the plough operators understand how the bridge is constructed and what to expect when they have to operate here. Back on the north side of the approach road, the stage had been reached with the drainage system where gravel was being placed to consolidate the piping. Meanwhile, at the waterline, in continuing work, to ensure environmental safeguards, a crew was removing sediment samples for testing. During the day two, another major equipment, a bucket lift, departed the site. And just in case you're wondering about the east end, I can tell you that Sharp were very busy, both delivering and working topsoil below the library. And there was a lot of movement of redundant material from the site as well. The Genic found itself on Pier 12 on Friday, supporting some external activity and it gave us an opportunity to fly along a very clean bridge. By day's end, all its duties complete, the Genic would be moved to a parking area where it will remain dormant, awaiting any extraordinary call to service. With drainage work all but complete, Barr's attention turned to the removal of spoil with the assistance of the usual trucks from John's grading services. The equipment exodus continued with the removal of the last wheeled restrooms from the site. We opened with a mention that the Genic had started the day out on Pier 12. It was providing a platform for a talented team from Queen's University who have designed and installed sophisticated sensors on the bridge. Back on the West End, the shoreline looked particularly good going into the weekend. And that leaves me with just one more thing to mention before we go to wildlife. Utilities Kingston appeared on Friday to ensure that street lights on the approach to the bridge were in full working order.
Well, that's it for the last week before the bridge opens on Tuesday, December 13th. I want you to know that it's been a privilege. I want you to know that it's been a privilege and a pleasure to record these updates, and they won't be the last you hear from either Aerosnapper or the Waban Crossing. You should also know that Paul Wash and I have a photo book in preparation and it'll be available for purchase early in the new year. This is what the cover is going to look like. This is what the cover looks like and you can expect it to come out early in the new year. Bye for now. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year.